In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this animation. So the first thing that we're going to do is import our footage. And then once we have our footage in the timeline, we're going to select, right click, and we're going to go to track and stabilize, and track camera. We're going to go ahead and let After Effects do its magic. Right now it's just going to calculate the scene and it's going to start to pull data points of what, how the camera was actually used. So this actually looks like a really good track point. I'm going to select and you can tell it selected three points for me. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to create null in camera. So once you do that, now we have our information on the eyeball. So if we look at our animation here, you're going to notice that we have a black fill around his face. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that effect. On the keyboard, Command Y, it's gonna go ahead and create a new solid for us. And let's just name this face mask. With our face mask selected, let's go ahead and make that a 3D layer. With our null selected, we're gonna hit P on the keyboard and that's gonna bring up our position. And then we're gonna select our mask and hit P. And what we wanna do is just copy and paste these values into our face mask. So go ahead and select that, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. We basically want our face mask to follow that null. So now that we have that selected, we're gonna go ahead and just scale up our, our solid there. And then we're gonna turn this off. On the keyboard, hit G. And we're gonna draw a mask. Let's go over here so that bar is not in the way in the foreground here. So if we draw a mask, and we turn it back on. Now you can tell our mask is, uh, is over our talent. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now if we scrub our timeline, we don't have to do anything else really because the mask is already reading the 3D information and it's following our tracking points. This bar in the foreground kind of goes over the mask a little bit, so let's go ahead and clean that up. With the face mask selected, on the keyboard hit G, and we're gonna draw a mask. You hit M on the keyboard, that'll bring up our mask properties. You can tell the one for the beam is pink, for this one here, we're gonna go ahead and hit subtract. Go to the beginning of our timeline, and we're gonna drop a mask path keyframe, and then we're gonna come over to right about there, and then drop another keyframe. We'll go back to the beginning, double click any point of your mask, it'll select all points, and then we can just arrow key over there. So just to help blend this in a little bit, since it's such a hard edge right now, if we select our layer and hit F on the keyboard, that'll bring up our feathers, and let's just put that to 10 pixels on both values. Yeah, there you go. So now it looks, it kind of matches the depth of field of the actual camera. So uh, that's how we can kind of make our face appear like, as it's behind the beam. And now you can tell that I have this glitch effect of the black and white bars that are going across his face. So these glitch effects, they're all created with adjustment layers. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you how I created that. And you can see what it's doing here. So these Adjustment layers, they have no keyframes. The ones that are selected, these are all just very quick cuts and I just adjusted the size of each adjustment layer. So you can kind of do however you want. Um, I started with the eye because that's the focal point. So I, I just wanted to start there. And um, I really just kind of moved these around in a, in a way that I thought worked well. So you can just move these. And when it snaps onto here, I just put a scale keyframe to bring that fully on. That's how I created the glitch effect. And this is the way that I do a lot of my glitch animations is all with adjustment layers. And it's really just getting in and timing out your animations. It's kind of almost stop motion style in a way. So now these other adjustment layers, you can tell there's a lot of them, I'll make these ones yellow this time. If I turn these ones on, all of these adjustment layers, they have the transform. So if you go to effect, transform. So I just adjusted the position in the transform. So now that this is there, it basically, I can move, I can move around and that adjustment layer is going to move the video footage around. So I created a few of those, as you can tell with this one here. Let me turn off the face mask so we can see. There we go. You can see it a lot better now. So when it goes full black and white is when I want the face mask to come on. We're gonna do option left bracket and we'll trim the clip. 
So our face mask is not going to appear until the full frame goes black and white. So right there. So we have our black and white glitches and green layers here. And then the yellow ones are going to be the distorted look. So here I just adjusted the scale. So with these ones, you can kind of move it around and, and see what it's doing here. You can adjust the size of your adjustment layer and it'll give you different looks. This one here, I just kind of drew an X just to give it like a nice little design element there. With these ones here, you can tell that you can't see the face behind it because what I did was I just used the levels on here and the levels, I just crunched it all the way so it's white. It helps bring those highlights through. So that's how I created the glitch animations in this scene, all with adjustment layers. And you can tell each adjustment layer, they're very short. They're like one to two frames long. And that's what kind of gives it that nice glitch effect. And the next part I'm gonna show you is these little dots here. You can see how these dots in the center are just kind of animating around. And then we also have some symbols and uh, grid animations that are happening around the eyes. We'll go ahead and uh, talk about how I got those kinds of animations. I purchased this pack from AE Scripts. It's called Data Damage Animated Typeface. It gives you pre-generated um, animation typefaces and symbols and all that. It's a really cool pack, and um, I used a lot of this look for the animation. So with taking this animation, I basically dragged this into my timeline. I turned it into a 3D layer, and then I took the information of our null that is tracked to the face, and I just copied and pasted these values into each of my um, animated graphic. And at this point, really all I did, so now I know that that graphic is sticking to my tracking point. Um, I, I, it was just a matter of duplicating that a lot of times and just replacing it, messing around with the scale and making it kind of dynamic. You know, you can tell how I have the glitch effect overlaying this so it affects the graphics as well. So you can see these graphics here way in the foreground. What I did was just put those further in Z space and then I turned on depth of field on my camera. So with this one selected here, so if I bring it closer, it's gonna start to become in focus. So like right about there is in focus. So all I did was just grab that layer and bring it further out. And it's actually cool when you do this kind of effect with the camera moving, and it creates the depth of the shot. So that was some of the, uh, the techniques that I used to generate that. Um, and then you're also going to notice that there's um, some little design elements that um, I animated with shape layers. So if I just solo these, these are just small little dots. These are just all added little pieces to see what that looks like there. Um, so these ones here, if I, I'm going to go ahead and go into this composition. So in, in our shape layer, um, I just animated dots. As you can tell, I just I animated one comp and then I duplicated it. So this is what the timeline looks like for the animated dots. And none of them have keyframes. So this is all just the same technique that I used for doing the glitch effect with the adjustment layer is the same technique that I used for animating these dots. So if we preview it, it's just a bunch of uh, layers that are cut to maybe one or two frames and they just create this cool little data glitch effect. Added some 16 millimeter grain. On the upper right, I added the grain and then I added another layer on top of that, and that just kind of gives it a little bit more uh, of that look. I kind of wanted to go for that grungy kind of, you know, um, look for this, so uh, that was a technique that I used. To animate the, the points on the face, if you select your layer here and you go to your effects control and your 3D camera tracker, if you check render track points, that will render out that data in your video. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the end of the video. Let's take a look at the final animation.